All right. So continuing with our, our vector imaging, ultimately to make a logo design project. And this is, let me see, assignment six, I believe. Indeed. All right. So what I want to do is I want to keep playing with Adobe Illustrator. This idea of how can you make these cutouts of black shapes? What are the different methods we have? Because we can sketch and sketch and sketch and come up with something. And I have something I'm pretty interested in for my angry elemental sketch. But then I looked back at some other work I did in the past. I did this for a game we were playing at home called um, King of Tokyo. We made up our own monsters for it. And I came up with the glump monster. Right. So I just reduced its color and kind of saw the shapes. And it just looks like kind of sludge, right? But if you scale it down, it, it kind of loses all definition. So I want that kind of sensibility, but I want it in something that does scale. So this doesn't scale. It's too much going on. You lose it about here. And that's about the size a logo, an iconic logo would be on a business card. But this one does scale. So fewer elements. And the fewer elements you have, the more it becomes about the space between them. And I like this because at least in my mind, it kind of looks perilous. It looks like flailing. And it plays with a logo I've seen before. And I don't know if it's for the YMCA or for like an Olympic swimming event or something. But kind of a, a swimmer shown as a triangle with a little circle, right? And so I'm playing with that as a, an angry kind of eye and an, an eyebrow. But, um, but really, I think it's more, and maybe I'll play this up, kind of a swimmer getting overwhelmed by the water. The water's had enough. It's like a hand swatting it down. So that made me think, what would be a good kind of tagline for this? Because logos, iconic logos often have like a company name, a brand. So I thought about it for a while, and I like that phrase, held to the no. You know, so how about H to the O? Sounds a little aggressive, a little sassy. So there are tools, and this might be helpful to you. I've mentioned a lot of you looking at your sketches. Some reference might be helpful. We live in a, an amazing day and age where we have artificial intelligence tools that help a lot of small businesses. And they can create logo solutions for you. They're not good logo solutions, thank God. because Artificial intelligence is not good at visual things not good at visual acuity, and not good at creative tasks, right? But what you do is you put in something like the phrase H to the O, and then you give it, you feed it some clip art um, examples. So I put in wave, and I found like five different wave options I liked. And really they only used three of them that were any good. And then it shows me kind of text solutions but it showed me something I didn't really notice before. And this one, I think, is the one that really showed it to me. And I'll show you how to do this for yourself. But this kind of looks like a hand, you know, just talk to the hand kind of thing. So that could be funny in that phrase. But that is the wrong type solution for it. So it's all very subtle. So AI isn't there yet. But it can point you in the right direction. I did like this type solution. And even though I'm not going to put a type solution with this logo, it's fun to think, like, would it work? What's the right amount of sass? What's the right kind of line quality? How, how do I want the, the eye to uh, move across it? What personality does it have? Is it rigid? Is it flexible? Is it sarcastic? Is it really sincere, you know, in its anger? <laughs> uh, what have you. Okay, so in order to understand logos more broadly and how AI can work, and to show you what I used, so you can feel free to do it, this is one of many new companies trying to, to really use machine learning. And so the idea is that these websites and these offerings will get better and better as more and more people use them, right? Because what they do is they just spurt out thousands of options but then they keep track of which ones the people actually prefer. And then that goes into the machine learning 
they don't know what's good. You know, they don't know what works, but they, they take all of the, the input they get from people using it, like Facebook does when you click on ads, and they try to improve it. So if you go to LogoJoy, and they're always changing things, but it's so easy. So enter like a phrase you think works, like, um, like, <laughs> let's make something funny. I'm thinking angry wind. Let's say uh, passing wind. And then this starts to show you, and this is new. This wasn't even part of Logo Joy like two months ago. They want to know immediately what your visual taste is. And they're basically asking for the three different versions. Do you like central and symmetrical logos? <laughs> like this burger here. Or do you like dynamic logos that really move the eye? Right, I'm trying to find one. This one kind of is, but this stallion one definitely does, right? Do you like ones that are more abstracted, ones that are more narrative? Let's go with that stallion one. I like that. I like the grizzly one. It's dynamic. It uses positive and negative shapes in an interesting way. I like powerhouse, the gorilla. And then let's do one that's central and symmetrical. And then maybe one that's super abstract almost non-representational and how simple it is. Okay, so then we continue. And then we'll ask you some colors. And really, I just want to keep it super, super simple. So I'm just going to do grayscale. And I don't need to add a slogan. And now this is where this can help you with clip art. So wind, <laughs> I can search for things similar or symbols why are you not showing me let's see oh there we go so here is a wind gust and yeah for passing wind <laughs> as, a, as a concept like that's the title of my angry elemental it makes sense to have kind of a direction to it. So I can say, okay, I like this one. You get to put in five. I like this one. That's more symmetrical, but on its side. A lot of you are playing with, how do you show something like uh, a hurricane, you know, a typhoon? You have to be able to simplify it for it to be scalable. So this can kind of show you. Sometimes you'll be surprised by the complexity of them and yet how, how easy they are to read. Okay, so then we can continue. Let's see, I'll find one more. And then it will just start putting together these options that you chose. And then what are they selling? You pick one and then you can pay a little bit to have someone actually customize it for you. That's the human in the machine, the actual loop. But that one looks pretty good. But it's not great. Now, and all they're doing is putting the symbol with the words, right? But by just putting them next to each other, like this one looks nicely aggressive. By just putting them close to each other, it shows you how important shape is. How it's not actually what you draw that matters so much, it's how much space is between the elements. And so then they allow you to do things like enlarge, move around, but basically all I do is I make screen grabs of these to help inform what I'll actually do, what I'll customize. Now LogoJoy owns all the rights to all of their illustrations but it can give you some ideas. So I just do screen grabs, hold them this way. I like it's an easy way to play with colors and to see inspirations, especially for logos that will work at any scale, right? Because they need to work small and they need to work large. So that's one way you can reference clip art besides just doing a Google image search. And this works really well too. So if I look up wind gust, 
as a Google image search. And then I use the tools, just like we used before for searching uh, size. And we can go to type and just say clip art. You can't assume you have the rights to use any of these, right? Because clip art makes its money by, by buying licenses to it. But it can inspire your sketches. And it can can show you a, a better, what's called a, a viscom, a visual communication method to get across your idea more simply. And so you can save these and keep these in a folder. All right, so all of that is our reference. What you'll find when you're looking at different logos, and you can also, also look at logos, you'll find uh, three basic approaches. Some are a lot more common than others. The most common is this approach. This is called a central symmetrical design. And even though it doesn't have perfect bilateral symmetry, meaning if you cut it in half, it mirrors itself exactly left to right, though some do, obviously it's meant to gather our eye movement towards the center. Everything directs us towards the center. And in that way, it looks like a target. And maybe the best example of a central symmetrical logo is the logo for Target. <laughs> but the only the problem with this kind of logo treatment, iconic logo treatment, is you look at it and then you leave. There's nothing that keeps you in it, right, other than just pure engagement. So the next approach is what we call a dynamic logo design. And dynamic <laughs> logo designs try to move the eye across the logo but not so fast that your eye leaves it right away. Like you don't want a logo that's just an arrow down to the left because then your eye just follows the arrow and never looks at it again. But if you can use curves and diagonals to kind of keep the eye engaged at different speeds, horizontals and verticals slow eye movement, but curves and diagonals speed it up. It's a lot like the Nike swoosh, right? That can be more interesting. Dynamic can also use, this is a beautiful one, uh, can use angles, right, just to keep you more engaged. All of these, dynamic. Just that little swish underneath. <coughs> we want to leave the reading out the bottom left, or the, I'm sorry, the bottom right, but, um, but that s swings us back, so it helps us view it a little bit longer. Okay, and then you have logos that play with positive and negative space. These are more rare but they are really fun to think about. So this one, for instance, makes a skyline as the, uh, the tines to a key, right? So immediately there, we play with scale and we play with two different meanings, still with just one cut out black shape. Sometimes just um, opening up your white space so that the eye completes it for you, as it does in this World Wildlife Foundation logo, which is widely praised. Our eye completes the curves of the panda, right? And you can say this is like a W or something, but really it's just, it's called gestalt theory. Our eye completes those curves without needing them to be there. So there's no lines at all, they just cut out shapes. Same thing with the edges of this R. And this is a really great logo type for something that's, whose initials are RB. FedEx uses the negative space between the E and the X to give you a subliminal arrow, which helps you think of it being fast and efficient, right? Uh, this is a beautiful, simple example, you know, just putting that, that whale's fin to make the M, or these animals to make the, the elephant. <laughs> a little cat logo, very clever. So playing with your the simplicity of it, you know, of having that white space, it can become a solid thing in logo design. There's nothing to say that the positive space of the black is more important than the negative space. And so you can really play with that. Girl Scouts does that in a beautiful way too. It's one of my favorite logos. And how it's all unified in this kind of clover shape. All right, on and on. So lots of these different examples. So these are all, uh, <laughs> I'll zoom fast. It's not something a little disturbing. Um, 
it's a great one.